what do you think Yost would think of your almost point a minute offense so far? Um, yeah, it's, it's so far so good. Did, did, uh, did well. Uh, you know, they played a lot of plays. The offensive linemen uh, really were in the most snaps of the game. Mason Cole was the best uh, of all the linemen. And I think, I think the, uh, the other four were right, right, we're, we're, we're real close. But I thought Mason stood out. Coach, Coach uh, I noticed that the satellite camps, you always told the campers. Don't be Freddie Peaceoff. I've been trying to find out who is this guy, Freddie Peaceoff. <laughs> He's a four-inch guy that uh, wears a cape and a hat with a plume in it. And he's just tall enough to talk right into your ear and tell you that you don't have to practice today. Why are you working so hard? Get over there in the shade. Uh, no need to attack with enthusiasm I know that to mankind today so take a break take a knee uh, yeah he's uh, not a guy you want around you want to get him off your shoulder as fast as possible thanks coach <laughs> Jim I know you guys do the uh, the practice where you have them, you have the guys sprint and you race you know you don't talk about when you have them race and practice yeah. Mm -hmm. where yeah, does, races. Yeah, the races. Yes, right. Races. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Where does uh, where does Eddie McDoom land in those heats with with the with the skill guys? <laughs> um, we so we have we don't we don't do those in the fall right. as uh, much as we do in the spring. Um, there's there's a there's we're real close though to having a race between Ju Chesson and Eddie McDoom. It's been talked about. Um, so when that when that official challenge is made. Uh, and we'll race those, race them. It's been close. There's been there's been discussion if Eddie's faster than Jay or not. But that's, that would be the guy that Eddie would have to dethrone. But he's up Jay. there with the fastest on the team. To my eye, he is. Yeah. I mean, my eye time of watching him run is uh, is right up there with Ju. And I'm not the only one. There's been a few others that have commented on it and would like to see that race. It may take place. The gauntlet, the challenge has not been thrown down yet, so it's just been talked about. Directly in the middle here, John. Coach Clyde Hill's obviously been helping you around the goal line for mm -hmm. sure, but can you comment specifically on on how he's done so far and on your fullbacks in general? Yeah, I would uh, say Khalid has uh, been outstanding in all areas, uh, blocking, catching out of the backfield, protection, uh, and, and, and a special gift of being able to run the ball. He's, he's got a real knack, uh, picked up some fourth downs for us and touchdowns. Uh, he, I mean, he looks like the most complete NFL prototypical fullback on our roster. And, uh, and the others, uh, Henry Poggi, I think he's coming, he's coming along. He's, uh, they're both real tough guys. You know, they got to think of the hammer. You know, you'd rather be the hammer than the nail. Uh, I think a, a fullback is you know, the guy we want being our hammer. That uh, almost there's a special place on our team for, for the fullback position. You know, it's that the, the identity of the team. And, uh, and both those guys, and, and along with Bobby Henderson, he's. All three have real courage, contact courage. I think of it as contact courage. How fast can you go from point A to point B to hit somebody? That's what it sh that's the courage shows up, and just how how quick you get there to do do that uh, aggressive act. So uh, feel good about our all our fullbacks right now. But it's the most polished guy uh, in terms of. At an NFL ready uh, level, I would say that would be called in. Back middle, Isaiah. Hey, coach. Mm -hmm. uh, you worked with uh, Colorado's defensive coordinator Jim Levitt Jim in Levin. San Francisco. Um, oh, man. What do you uh, What are you expecting to see from his uh, his uh, defense? On yeah, very aggressive. Um, 
opportunistic. You know, they dive on your mistakes. They'll they, uh, create turnovers. You know, very sound. It's already showing up. And they're already getting turnovers. And, uh, playing with a lot of hustle, a lot of a lot of uh, instinct and talent. You know, I think. Uh, Jim's really brought out a lot of the talent that's on the team. There's some really outstanding players on, on their defense. And he's doing a great job bringing them, um, bringing them together, playing well together. And, and guys, are, guys are playing really well individually and as a team. How much of uh, Saturday's struggles after the 31 nothing is attributable to being up so much? I mean, do you think, is there a thing where guys lose focus or if they're not as Sharp once you have such a big lead and you work with that. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess we're not agreeing on that. I mean, we, we, um, I thought we played. I thought we were very sharp throughout the game. We won, won every quarter, and um, uh, did what we had to do. Got the job done. What you left here, Adam? Uh, one of the divisive questions. Making a statement, I just I just don't agree with the, the premise of the statement. So hard to answer the question. On sa on Saturday, you know, you got uh, some some good play from Matt Godin on the D line. Chase Winovich is working in there. I think Lawrence Marshall got some snaps too. Just curious, your thoughts on on the depth and how much you and, and Don Brown are are preparing, you know, with Taco and, and Brian out, knowing that you have other guys that you can rotate in there. Yeah, preparing a lot. Do you expect Jordan to play this weekend? I will see. Today's the first practice. No better after today. Um, with this offense so far so good, are you not willing to get too excited because of the competition you played, or just early in the season, or there's still you more you want to see? Uh, I'm excited. Excited and uh, want to want to keep getting better. Uh, find the things that we're good at. And, Keep working on those, enhancing those, and, and uh, any place that we can improve, that's that's uh, you know excited about that. So the, I'm excited. The, the tailbacks. Uh, about me to look like I'm not excited. Well, I just didn't know how excited you were. I guess um, media uh, sometimes gets it wrong. The tailbacks. Um, it took them a while to to break off some plays. Was that just because they were totally st stacking against the run there? Yeah, that was that was. Uh, you know, I think it was obvious for anybody, most football to see, that there was uh, were a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage and a lot of run type of blitzes, which you know, opened up some some real uh, good opportunities for us in the play action pass game. But I thought our backs ran real hard, protected the football, and uh, rushed, still rushed for over 100 yards. Back right. They acquitted themselves well. Taco Charlton also in the the we'll see as the world progresses. Yeah. Him. I wanted to ask you about. Uh, you grew up with the McCartney family close to you here in Michigan, mm -hmm. with Colorado coming back to town. Yeah. Do you have memories of Bill sharing an office with your dad growing up and what? Yeah. Was like? I do. Uh, great family. Love the McCartneys, uh, and they uh, had the best cereal of anybody in the neighborhood. <laughs> we had. We had Cheerios, uh, no flavor. Uh, we had Wheaties, but you could go to the McCartney's. They had one of those little carousels under the cabinet with Captain Crunch and uh, Lucky Charms, and Fruit Loops, and, uh, a wide assortment, ten or twelve different kinds of really good cereals. So, and uh, Lindy was great. She, uh, if you were hungry, you could just come in and yourself a bowl of cereal. Uh, love for that. Coach McCartney himself is legacy in coaching you. Memories of him coaching. Yeah, great memories. Uh, great coach. And uh, looking forward to seeing him. I believe he's coming to the game Saturday. Uh, I remember being on my official visit when I was going to Michigan and had a good long talk with Coach McCartney uh, the night before. Bo offered me a scholarship, and Coach, uh, Coach had some really good things to say to me, and, and uh, was very.
very convincing as to why I should come to Michigan. I was appreciative for, for that too. He ended up leaving like um, maybe like a couple weeks after that or, or less than a month later he went on and took the head coaching job. Uh, but, but he was there for my official visit. I always appreciate he took that time to spend with me. How do you guys prepare for tempo um, in terms of like the scout team? I guess the coaches all kind of do it differently during the week. Try to simulate it as uh, we can. Do you like do full sale changes? You have two like two scout teams. Like two scout rolling. teams, two levels. Mm -hmm. Cool. Line. Yeah, and we're we're doing good. I mean, in practice we were getting a playoff thirteen to thirteen to seventeen seconds a play in practice. We've been doing it now for three, three and a half weeks, four weeks almost. Of that type of that type of tempo for our defense. Coach, on your right there, Max. With the number of tight ends you guys have used early in the year, have you thought about how many you could use on a given play? I mean, have you ever done five on one play before? We've done four. Uh, haven't done five yet. We could. Come over to your left here, Coach Rachel. Um, Jim, Michigan and Colorado, they've only met four times since what, 1974. The most memorable, obviously, was the 1994 Hail Mary game. What do you remember about that game? Did you watch that game? I watched it, yes. What do you remember about it? Besides the Hail Mary, obviously. Yeah, I remember that that the most. Cordell Stewart threw uh, an amazing Hail Mary pass. That's what I remember the most. Stay on your left here, Mike. Good job. Um, on some of the on some of the blitzes that they they timed up really well and they, they were able to get in. Are those communication issues with the offensive line, Mason, saying like we need you know we need to get this guy to block or we need to have that guy get blocked, or is that an execution issue where the communication was there but just didn't get the block block taken care of? Uh, both both things occurred. Both things were uh, communication wasn't right, and then we uh, we physically uh, didn't slide our feet to the right spot. The other thing was there was a there was an issue with, with the eyes where they where they put their eyes and, and uh, looking out instead of looking in. Uh, so those those three things all occurred on on, on, on those different plays. Fair, so. fair to say those are points of emphasis for your players this, this week. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's uh, I'm very excited as a coach. That when you, you win a game 51 to 14, and then you still have things to, to go in and coach and, and feel like you can improve uh, your play on, that's, uh, there's probably no better feeling as a coach than to, to start the week that way. And you know, it uh, makes me very optimistic that you know, there's, there's ways that we can improve, there's things that we can fix. And, and I'm very confident with the coaches and players that we have that. We'll do that, and it, it, it makes you feel like you can get better. So uh, that's always happy about that, to be in that position. We've got time for a couple more. We'll start on the right, Nick. Jim, when a team does load up the box, eight, nine guys, and they do it all game and mm -hmm. don't ever switch from it, do you like that test for your offensive line? Is that like one of those catalyst building things you talk about where they're going to have to, that's an adverse situation they got to get through? Do you like that they were challenged that way? I do. I do like that. Um, I do like that, and, and that's you know we continue to prepare for that um, because it does give the opportunity for Ju Chesson, for Amar Darbo, for Jake Butt to be singled up in coverage, and we like our chances uh, a lot in those type of situations, and we like the, uh, the way our quarterback's throwing the football, the way he's, he's got the ability to to throw it downfield and and be accurate. Know that uh, we can. We got the guys up front to protect. We got the backs that can protect. We got the fullbacks that that can protect. So uh, yeah, that's a that's a part of the game that you know, we get excited about. That's a it's an opportunity for us. Down here on your left, Jim. You mentioned the margin of victory. Does it surprise you when an opposing coach comes out afterwards and says that his team, in a losing effort, out hit your team? <clears throat> They, they they hit well. That was a that was a that was a good physical football team. Uh, I was impressed the way they tackled. I was impressed the way they uh, 
the way they played. Uh, it, it was very impressed with their speed. Uh, that was, um, you know, I, I, I agree that they, they played very well. I mean, my, my, my view of it after the game and, and after watching the film was that, you know, we got, we got the job done. We took care of business physically in the lines. I feel the same as I did after the game. As you notice, I didn't say we dominated, uh, but I thought we, I thought we got the better of it. I thought we, um, we got the better of it, uh, not by a, not by a huge margin. I thought they're, I thought they have a very good football team. They're very well coached, coached, and uh, yeah, I was impressed with their aggression, their toughness, their speed. I wish them luck, like the rest of the way. The back left, Steve. Jim, uh, Matt Godin had a career high in tackles. And got around the field pretty well on Saturday. What yeah. have you liked about his play this season? Uh, he's, he is a, he is a steady, you know, high-performing guy, uh, tough guy, always in the lineup. Uh, really, really impressed with him. And he is, he is almost playing the level of, uh, of Ryan Glasgow, who is a defensive lineman, played one of the best, he played his best game this past week. And probably one of the better games I've ever seen a defensive lineman play. I mean, it was that good the way he, in terms of how he played the position and graded out. And then, uh, you know, Godin is a, is a very similar player. Uh, you know, not quite to the level of where Glasgow's playing right now, but, uh, but it's, good. it's great having both of, both of them. Also, uh, Mo Hurst, having him back in the lineup, he, he brought some real energy and, and good play and Chris Wormley was was outstanding in the ball game so uh, one of our top performers on defense along with Jabril uh, but those guys Glasgow Wormley Jabril were our top performers on defense and Golden was up there Golden was, was certainly up there he graded high he graded high that's okay yeah. good man <laughs> Great guy to be around, too. Yeah. Last question, John. Coach, as somebody that's uh, as close to the process as you are, is it gratifying to see uh, Wilton Spate so much more in command of the offense and the situation than maybe he was a year ago? Yeah, well, we've talked about that plenty. Um, you know, how far all of our quarterbacks have come in a year. Uh, been seeing the command of the offense. The accuracy, the, the good play, always felt like accurate in practice. You'll be accurate in the game. If you're in command of the offense in practice, you'll be in command of the offense in the game. Um, usually that's how it works. It's just the way it is. Uh, but you never know until you actually get into the game. But to see him do it in practice and do it in the game, uh, sure, that's a that's an unknown that's you know out of the equation. He Get it done. So keep going, keep keep going onward with uh, with Wilton, and just keep trying to find things uh, that he can improve his game. And it'll, experience tells me, I mean, it's not going to be the, the real influx that he had from last year to this year. I mean, to go like that you know, was a real inflection point. But there'll be subtle things that he can he can do to to keep improving always. It's just the nature of that position. There's, there's not a play you can't look at in practice and, and say, could have done a little bit something better or different. Uh, sometimes the ball is thrown as well as it can possibly be thrown, but you know, but there's there's things before that in terms of footwork and uh, eye placement, things that can be improved on. And like a lot, like about every position in football, Receiver's another one where by every single down you could you can find something within the play to uh, improve on. All right, thanks coach. Okay. Thanks. Here momentarily.